Hey YouTube, hope you guys are doing well. Um, we're doing well over here. My wife's uh, doing well. She's actually doing some fundraising for Relay for Life, but we can uh, get into that in a little bit. Let me go ahead and uh, we'll jump right in and do a, a quick box review for you guys. Gotta love the uh, the box art, the uh, the detail, the painting. It's all uh, really nice. The uh, Mark 44 Ammo Knight here from uh, the Machine and Krieger, specifically the Robot Battle 5. Um, you can see here it's uh, Kaio Kayama uh, partnered with Hasegawa back in 2015. Um, yeah, 120 scale. It's pretty big. And yeah, just one uh, one more look at that box art here before I flip this around. Yeah, you can check out, uh, I mean, all, all the sides are done up. They've got some markings on the sides. They've got a little bit of backstory, even in English there. And then on the back, uh, some more beautiful artwork here. Some some camo cards, paint scheme. You know, I really like the, uh, the look of that one where... Uh, only half the face panel is painted just to kind of break that panel up in half with the yellow and red. Smart gun equipment and then the steam curtain discharger which I think is a pretty cool concept considering uh, this thing is fighting a, an advanced rogue AI. Um, you gotta figure it's got some thermal sensors on there so the uh, the steam curtain can probably disrupt that thermal signature. Yeah, just gotta love the box art. And then uh, let's look inside. Oh, uh, it's interesting. It uh, comes with a kit in addition to all that beautiful artwork. But uh, you know, we'll get this out of the way here real quick and we can take a look at that uh, additional camo card you get as a bonus inside the box. So another two schemes uh, and then if you flip it over another another two there as well. So quite the deal. Um, all this artwork and and the free kit inside as well so yeah 120 scale pretty big um, it's, uh, oh, yeah don't worry about that um, what's really nice about the way this is designed is uh, they all just fit together with um, polycap material so um, with the exception of this one this one is gonna have to get glued at some point but uh, in the meantime it's it's not finished it's um, you know just just uh, base coated at this point with uh, uh, the chipping effects are done by painting everything uh, in that rust tone. The actual camel colors are just kind of stippled on over top to, to give it that effect. You just paint everything except the areas you want chipped. So again, this thing can kind of uh, disassemble. Uh, there's only, I think, a few parts on here that I've really glued uh, in terms of the, the full final assembly. Uh, and then this little bottom peg here that uh, slots into the waist. Uh, pretty cool design because it, uh, it also accepts a, a toothpick or a, like a shish kebab stick or something like that so you can stick it right in there and then automatic uh, painting stand so pretty cool little feature if anybody's not familiar with these kits um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, direct you guys over to Lincoln Wright and his paint on plastic channel because he can talk about all this stuff way more than I can and everything I'm talking about I've just stolen directly from him so we'll get into some uh, oil painting today some dot filters, some rendering, uh, you know, whatever it is, it's it's all just oil paints. So, you know, I've already started getting my little palette laid out here and I figured, ah, why not? Might as well go ahead and film it. Because, uh, look at this. I mean, you got yellow ochre, raw sienna. I mean, which one's which? Well, probably doesn't matter. The idea was, uh, you know, filming it would let me uh, know that this was the raw sienna that I was putting down right now. Um, just to show you guys, like, you do want to just put that uh, on the cardboard. You can see specifically with this... Uh, to just how much linseed oil is coming out of there and that's that's what takes forever to dry uh, that's what uh, makes the oil paint a little shiny yeah so you see I'm, I'm just gonna finish putting these on here but uh, yeah some of these tubes I, I've had these tubes since uh, you know my mom bought them for me when I was in maybe high school or middle school either way it's it's been a long time and they're definitely uh, some of the lids are kind of split apart there's there's like dried up linseed oil all over the place and uh, some of these definitely need a pair of ice grips just to open them up but uh but they're still going i mean it's it's been what is that like uh i don't know i don't know if it's been 20 years but it has been close and then these oil paints are perfectly fine so you know whether they're a little expensive or not up front i mean they're gonna last forever all right let's go around the horn we got cadmium red medium cadmium yellow light cerulean blue terra verte raw umber burnt sienna raw sienna Yellow Ochre, Naples Yellow Hue, Titanium Buff, and Payne's Gray. 
Uh, sorry guys, I don't have the budget yet for the uh, paint name sterl across the bottom of the screen for you while we watch the cardboard soak up that linseed oil. Uh, not bad, we'll get into uh, our brush selection here. So this is just a, um, a detail brush. This is specifically a 2-0 round. Doesn't have to be that though. I mean any, any small brush with the fine points is going to work just fine. Doesn't have to be new either. Uh, this is the classic 1 8 inch angular shader. Um, it's a little small for what I'm doing though, so I went with um, AK's larger version. Uh, it's, I don't know, maybe a 3 8 inch angular shader. They just call it AK578. But um, the idea being that uh, for a larger surface like this, um, the larger the brush, you really want to be using the largest brush you can get away with for some of these uh, blending effects with uh, the dot filtering. So I usually stick to these um, earthy tones if I'm doing more military models. And um, today I'm going to be using kind of these wild colors here. You know, I'll, I don't know if I'm going to hit everything or not, but definitely the reds and yellows and blues. Um, my my idea is to apply the reds. Uh, you know, any any kind of area where the light's going to be hitting directly, I want to be applying the the reds and yellows and try and get some of that. Uh, um, you know, I guess direct sunlight, like a zenithal kind of concept, uh, and then in the the shadow areas, get more of the uh, the cool blue colors, maybe the um, the darker umbers, things like that, to help sell the idea of the shadows. And um, you can you can do these dot filters any way you want. Again, I, I usually will do more earthy tones and traditional kind of I guess military weathering colors. Um, that way, you know, if I don't blend it. All the way down to a true filter level i can still get away with some rain marks and some you know mud dust and grime and maybe even some uh, discoloration in a in a green paint scheme or you know whatever um pans are gray or something like that and you kind of get away with uh not having to worry if you don't <laughs> blend all those reds out all the way so uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to go more of a filter direction today and um you know get get the kind of a reddish yellow filter orange filter on, on some of those brighter parts, the parts that would be in the sun, and then a cooler blue-green filter, um, just to kind of help sell the idea of the, uh, the, the, I guess, highlight and shadow values and, and um, how they'd be saturated in, in full sun. I guess we'll, uh, we'll see if it works or not, but uh, it's my understanding that uh, the, the original dot filter um, was, uh, you know, I remember back in the, the fine scale modeling, forum days where um you'd see the guys do the dot filter and it would be every single color you know red orange yellow green you know blues and purples all kinds of stuff in there and they would uh blend it all the way down until you couldn't tell what was where and uh it uh, I, I believe Meg Jimenez is the one that's credited with coming up with this idea and i've heard it explained that he um would see armor sitting out in the sun i guess at museums out there in spain and uh the spanish sun just seeing the uh the sun hit the armor it would uh, really kind of give it that kind of I guess like a full saturation like uh, I don't know uh, patina is not the right word but uh, just uh, I guess it would really um, put a lot of color variation uh, just with that that full sun but you can use the dot filter however you want you can use it more of a filter and just put a little bit of tone in certain areas um, or you can you can do it more uh, as kind of a streaking weathering effect where you use some dirty dusty colors and uh, get some rain marks and uh, you know leave more of that filter behind and blend it in with the rest of the weathering as you go something else I did with this kit um, I, I had this plan in mind uh, before I even started painting the uh, the camouflage colors, uh, and I, I think, uh, again, I can kind of, if you watch my last video, you can kind of credit Rick Lawler with giving me this concept of, um, you know, having the, having the finish line in mind and the goal in mind and, and planning the whole process through. And, you know, I, I knew I wanted to do this, this uh, kind of warmer tones, cooler tones, you know, highlight shadow idea. Um, so even the, uh, the greens I use to paint the camouflage on the, uh, the upper torso, uh, have a bit of, uh, yellow and maybe a tiny uh, touch of the uh, the red mixed in just to help again sell that idea the um, the legs are are just kind of the straight color right out of the bottle and then i'll just uh, i'll just keep speeding this up and up and up until we get to the end but it's it's a pretty straightforward concept you know you put the dots on there you blend it all down you get to the point where uh 
you can hardly tell maybe <laughs> that you put some of those dots on there in the first place but uh, the idea is just to kind of help unify all the different base colors and then again just adding a bit of a uh, color shift you know so if you're if you're going to go with all the colors you're just kind of, you know trying to add that i guess full saturation that full value kind of like Meggy Menas had um wanted to do back in the day and then um you know if you if you've got a lot of colors and you just want to add maybe a little bit of a a warm tone and just you know pick warm colors and blend them all in same thing with the cool tone same thing with the dusty tone i mean it's, it's really just the idea of, of adding a, a very very light filter and you can you know they make pre-mixed filters uh, you can use enamel products um you can you can do kind of what i did and, and mix your colors accordingly and uh, paint your base tones with that in mind um any, any combination that's going to work and it's not really a step you have to do um, but what i'm going to do today is kind of combine this process with um, you know some uh, micronality oil paint rendering and so as I'm going along with this uh, I'm also going to be using some of those uh, you know, burnt sienna raw sienna kind of tones and, and get some uh, some rust streaking and some uh, rust almost rust filtering I guess you'd say if you've ever seen those uh, light colored paints that uh, have been exposed to like the, the heavy rusting underneath it's almost like the entire uh, section of paint gets uh, covered up in kind of that uh, that orangish staining from the rust <laughs> Another idea I'm going to try and achieve here is this um, kind of asymmetry. So if I uh, if I have one area that's kind of heavily rusted and heavily stained orange, maybe I'm going to have an opposite area that's um, a little, maybe a little fresher, um, you know, darker rust tones. Maybe the kind of those cooler colors with the uh, you know raw umber kind of mixed in with blue, all filtered in there to um, help help counteract and and balance everything out. You know, and depending on how much you uh, you blend these in, you can you can add some oil paints and stipple uh, a little bit to kind of get uh, maybe a heavier filter in one area. Um, you know, stippling is probably a better option for the flat surfaces, uh, and then the uh, the vertical surfaces more of that streaking action. Um, but then I'm just kind of you know I'm adding a, a little bit of uh, yellow into the the red on the face plate. I'm adding a little bit of a uh, green into the kind of camouflage stripes across the top. Um, you know, just, just little, little areas that I, you know, I see along the way as I'm doing this dot filtering, if I see an area that, uh, you know, it makes sense instead of doing a dot to just do some, um, some specific color work, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll put in some pin washes around these rivets and bolts. Um, you know, any specific shadow area that I really want to emphasize, I can, I can add in some of that shadow color and, you know, just very lightly blend it out, just leave it kind of as is for the most part. But that's, uh, that's kind of what I like about the, the the OPR, the oil rendering process, is you can uh, you can just work on one section. You can you can work in areas, but but the idea is that it's it's all oil paint. It's all you know mixes and blends the same. You can go from um, you know straight paint all the way to a very 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 thin filter, just depending on how much thinner you add or you, you don't add. And um, you know all all this kind of blends and works as you're going. And if there's an area where you want to leave it with more of a hard edge, you just kind of you know, drop it in there and, and kind of pay attention to where that was and <laughs> make sure you don't run the uh, the big blending brush right over the top of it. And it'll it'll leave a pretty uh, pretty nice, um, I usually use it for shadows, but you can use it for dust as well. And it's, it's going to have a nice edge to it. It does, it's not something you have to necessarily uh, blend out until it's, you know, practically invisible. But uh, but at the same time, even if you, if you just kind of leave it alone, it's not going to have a very hard edge like you would normally get with uh, just a, a brush worth of acrylic paint. Again, what I really like about these kits, uh, and, and you know, from what I've seen, it, you know, a lot of these uh, Machine and Krieger kits are set up the same way, where uh, you can kind of split them apart at the waist. You can work on the uh, the upper torso while uh, the legs are drying, vice versa, and just kind of bounce back and forth. And um, yeah, you can see right there in that shadow, I just added a ton of blue paint. And I'm not sure if it's the uh, maybe the specific pigments in this uh, you know cerulean blue paint or um, 
you know, again some of these some of these tubes are quite old but uh, I, I didn't really feel like the uh, the blue really uh, maybe it's because it's it's already a kind of a cool um, light green interior green kind of color down there but uh, it didn't really it didn't it, it took a lot of paint to get a little bit of an effect so I guess that's better than the other way around where uh, <laughs> you have to walk it all the way back but I, I did notice the blue kind of took a while to make a difference and, and in some areas I'm not even sure that it did but um, the flip side can be said for the uh, the umbers and the rust tones and uh, just the slightest amount of that um, even even here you can see the the whole upper half uh, compared to the uh, the side panel there or even the legs just the, the difference in the in colors so um, yeah I'm even kind of going in and adding a little bit of the green back into those camouflage stripes and trying to pop those back out a little bit but I mean you can work back and forth and um, you know again if you if you get a bunch of thinner and you, you um, work that that filtered area I mean you can you know, even remove more of that filter if you want it's uh, it's kind of a stress-free process because it's it's really you know difficult to mess up if something gets a little too um, filtered in one direction you can always add a little bit to, you know either either take take a lot of thinner and try and work it work it back or um, I, I don't don't even mind sometimes just going in with kind of a contrasting color or uh, a different color or kind of working things around that that direction as well maybe um, highlight something else or you know, find a way to find a way to use it and contrast it somewhere in a different area so I just wanted to circle back and say uh, my wife Sarah's got a team set up for our local Relay for Life so they've already uh, they've already sent her a uh, survivor t-shirt and uh, the relay kicks off with a survivor lap uh, where all the survivors get out there and, and do that first lap and then uh, you know, the families and supporters and everyone in the community can go ahead and uh, start after that. It kicks off a 24-hour relay where um, you know, the teams are expected to have at least one person kind of awake and, and walking those uh, relay laps throughout the night. And so I'll have a, I'll have a link down below and I'll, I'll pin one in the comments as well just uh, for my wife's um, kind of team page where you can uh, submit any kind of donations if you want or um, you know if you just want to leave a comment and support that's obviously fine too I you know I know times are tough for everybody um, but uh, I, I do want to give a little shout out to some of the guys over with the uh, Plastic Posse group um, the podcast group out there I've already gotten some donations uh, from some of the guys affiliated with that and uh, I really appreciate it you know even the uh, the original GoFundMe we ran uh, while she was going through chemo and then um, just you know even now seeing all the all the support in the community for her and for me and um, just uh, you know having having this group here in the community and and the hobby in general just to, to help with, uh, with stress and just be a, a kind of creative release to be able to focus on on something other than uh, the real world has been very beneficial and uh, I'm sure with the pandemic and everything else the last couple of years it's uh, you know been been beneficial for a lot of people and uh, i'm excited to see the hobby grow and and you know, expand with uh, things like the podcast which i've you know finally started listening to uh i'm going back to the office a little more often now so i'm you know, commuting to and from work and uh the plastic posse podcast is a great thing to have on on the radio while you're you're driving in but uh yeah they actually are um why why i've got one of these uh machine and Krieger kits on the on the bench right now just uh um yeah I, I had this kit I, I think I bought it back in 2021 uh, from Hobby Link Japan and I uh you know I've, I've kind of paid attention a little bit like it's been on and off my radar the whole machine and Krieger thing since maybe 2008 um but then the, you know the plastic posse getting me uh familiar with Lincoln Wright and uh, and finding his YouTube channel and uh Instagram and all that and learning more about the actual uh, machine and Krieger property itself and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun and um, you know I, I probably put this thing together I want to say in like uh, I mean it, it was over a weekend but <laughs> we were doing a lot of different things that weekend and so um, you know it might, it might have been like two and a half days but but really at the bench it was probably just a couple hours so it was a uh, it was a lot of fun and then just the freedom to paint this thing however I want and get a little more artistic with it and use some of these crazy colors and so um, yeah, thanks again to you, know, you guys. You know who you are. I'm not even sure if you're watching the YouTube video, but uh, either way, I really appreciate the donations, and uh, you know it means a lot. Uh, you guys, you know, everyone's uh, that's donated over the years that you know, never met Sarah, never met myself, and uh, still feels uh, 
like they can they can uh, give back and um, you know with, with nothing in return it's 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 really great I really appreciate it guys so I'm, I'm gonna just go into some uh, more like oil paint rendering I guess you'd say at this point I've kind of gone away from the, the overall filter and now I'm kind of just going in with I guess what are essentially like smaller filters um, <laughs> And um, I'll be able to do some different effects here as well. Um, some streaking, some uh, even chipping and, and rust stains. And, um, and you can just see how this kind of quickly turns from uh, just a couple random bits of paint. And now that whole uh, bottom bottom left leg looks uh, significantly more worn out than the, the right leg. Um, and then I'll, I'll got some, some high-res photos here. I'll show you the, uh, the comparison because I haven't done anything with the back of the legs or uh, with the whole left side of the torso. Um, so I'll be able to show you some before and after with that. This is the side that's been rendered. Uh, so if you keep that in mind, uh, when we look at the rest of these pictures here, the, the right side of the torso and basically the front of the legs and, and more heavily on that, that left leg. So none of this has really been touched at all with the oil paints. This is all just the, the base painted acrylic. And then uh, I got some close-up shots here as well. 